Okay. Let's see that everything works as expected. Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, in this stream, we will be um, we'll be working with uh, Godot modules much more, but this time I would like to use it to 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 basically call uh, Godot internal functions. Um, yeah, and we, I will try to also do the the things we are doing with um, the data uh, for creating messes. I would like to. Uh, do it uh, this time uh, through using C++ and using uh, and making a good module. So I have built here the latest. I have created my own fork called Cyclops that I will be doing uh, the development there. And I will try to make now a JIT branch. Uh, let me think how we make JIT branches because I think it's JIT branch. Is it JIT branch? B or it's Jim Brands. Check out B. Uh, let's say cheat create brands. Uh, creating branches when you test things uh, really recommend it uh, because uh, it allows you to uh, work there with your changes and make any changes you want. Um, so let's take a look how we what kind of we using here so check out master check out now you want to uh, let create a hot pin frank that will work until yeah this is actually check out b okay let's check out b so i'm gonna make a new branch that's called that uh module test let's make a new branch to check out uh, so let's see first of all, let's see what kind of branches we have. So we have three and master. The master is a, a good four, and three is the one I'm currently working on. Uh, let's make one it's called um, JIT checkout uh, B. Uh, call it, uh, let's call it module calls test so we can test there how exactly we can make a module calls functions um yeah okay so now we have to be in the new branch and sure enough we are in a new branch and we can merge those things back to 3.x or probably i will make my own branch there to uh, merge things but for now i will keep it as it is so Right, so the first thing we have to do is go back to creating a module. So creating a module, uh, I will just copy paste what we did last time. So I don't know if I actually have this here. So it has to be here in modules. And let's see, if we have the, I don't think we have that. I think I've done that in, uh, I've done this with, uh, with the Godot uh, uh, original repo. And I didn't have my fork at the moment. Um, so probably we'll have to do it again. So let's make a test that we call a module that we've been going to call uh, mesh create. Mesh create, something really simple. So go here to modules, new folder and call it mesh create. Nothing fancy, just a simple. And I think it doesn't collide with anything else. And that's fine. So inside here, we're going to add a mesh create uh, C, uh, C++. So a mesh create C++. Um, and, and another file, it's called, called mesh create H++. Uh, from what I've seen, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So uh, Godot, excuse me, Godot uh, tends to use the uh, .h 
header uh, extension for C++, but I don't really like it because for me, .h means basically C, which we don't really do here. Here we're going to do C++. So I don't really like using that. I prefer using HPP, which is also pretty standard for uh, C++ projects. Um, and if you can see immediately where here it's uh, the, the, I'm using the Visual Studio Code editor. So you can see here that um, already uh, it, it thinks it's actually C because it has the, the .h uh, extension, where here you can see immediately the Visual Studio Code knows that I'm actually using a C++. Um, uh, C++ um, a header, so it's a it's a nice thing to actually name them different with different extensions. I think. Do you think that this is a folder? Why well, think this is a folder? I didn't ask for to make a folder. So delete that. Move the trust. Why new files? Did I say new folder? Oh, mess create. C++. Yeah, probably I said more folder. Okay, so we have two files here, the header and the source, source code file. Um, so let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, we'll go back to the documentation and copy paste what is there. Uh, go to documentation and go to... What was it? It was a compiling. I think it was in compiling. Uh, no. It was in engine development. So in engine development was extending Godot by modifying its source code. It's well custom models in C++. So we go here and yeah, so I'm going to make, first I'm going to make a guard. So let's, let's keep the, take this one and we're going to radically change it. So here, uh, we're going to go to mess create. Uh, he, yeah, it's only the header file, so we're gonna be the header file. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna change that to uh, mess create. Okay. I like this. So this is as we said previously it's just a guard it's meant to keep make sure that the header file is included only one time okay i'm gonna keep the reference yeah i think the reference is fine uh it's that would the class would be mess create okay sorry This is this is actually basically uh, nothing more than a placeholder file. I'm not. I'm, I'm probably will not really keep it. Um, I will keep the stuff. Byte method is gonna remain the same. Public uh, is gonna make a one function that probably will return something. Now this is the difficult part: is finding exactly what's gonna be. But for now, I'm gonna make it void uh, and call it create and keep it empty for now to keep it simple and here i'm gonna make the let me see that i save that so here i will have to um so well, let's make it no actually let's make it in uh, return an int to make sure that it works as an experiment and then i'm gonna actually uh, change it so uh, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to do a lot of copy pasting now because I don't want to go through and do all of this from my head. I don't remember most of those things anyway. We're going to have only one function here. Uh, 
Ramón. Uh, and it doesn't say anything else value. It's an empty function and it's going to return just one. Let's return something more complicated, 43. Uh, and we're going to need those. No, no. Uh, and here we go with mesh create. Methods and I'm gonna add a method here as create. It doesn't take anything of value, and I will be not it as mess create. Create. Uh, if you wanted to find out what I'm doing here, uh, we explained those things on the previous stream. So basically, here just a reminder: I'm binding the method, make it be recognized. Uh, and I can call it from GD script and uh, yeah, I will keep the count as it is here. Uh, I have kept it uh, here and anyway, so it's part of that. I'm not really using it as a variable, but it's not really a big problem for now. I'm just trying to make sure that this piece of code works and create it does nothing other than returning 43. Uh, so yeah, hmm. we have our first message and it's spam. of course it's a spam yeah how uh, delete spams moderate yeah uh, uh that's the beauty about it spam oh well for now let me touch this i want to continue with the stream um moderation Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, actually, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open another tab to make sure that the stream works well Just give me a second to make sure that the streams works well uh, where am i okay yeah so oh, okay i can do it from here uh what is that? Okay, so I deleted and I banned my first bot. So that's about it. So I'm going to mute it now because, first of all, let's see. Testing, testing stream. Testing stream one, two, three. Okay, everything works fine. So we go back to um, uh, to the class here. Uh, let's remove. No, it's fine. Mm. Okay, one thing I want to see. Yeah. Uh, let me think. Okay. So. Yeah, so we actually need other things as well. So this is not only the only things we need. We need also um, the register types H and register type CP+, which I'm going to add now. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add uh, register types H and register type C++. So let's go with a new file. Uh, a register. Oh, come on. Rename. Okay, so register types uh, HPP and a new file called register types C++. 
So because the naming here matters in this case, make sure that the register type, so it's actually plural, okay? So that's correct. So here we're going to add this one. I'm going to rename a bit to make it work. Uh, so let's start with the header file. I think the header file is for our first, right? Yeah. So, uh, so register types HPP and register mesh create types. Because you have to remember here uh, that the name really matters in text and the name of the folder. Uh, and mesh create types. Types. Okay. Um, can you actually say this in the comment? Yes, the word, the word in the middle must be the same as the, mod, as the module folder name. Which, frankly, I don't really like this kind of uh, setup. Usually, I don't think it's a good idea to hard code things to take the name of folders because you can easily, you know, screw things up uh, this way. Uh, I think it's better to use configuration files for this kind of stuff, but, you know, that's the design of code. Uh, anyway, so we go to C++ here and copy-paste again what we have seen here for C++. Uh, I don't think it's going to change much here. Come on, what happened? Okay. So that goes there. Again, I am just doing the typical registrations at, 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 at things, blah, 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 blah. This is not a change. This change because it's a mess. Create HPP. So this one is going to basically register a class and make sure it's discoverable from the script. Uh, so this is actually a, a register. Uh, mess create, mess create, and here it's gonna be uh, mess create. So this is actually uh, has filled this up for us, and then we have under it's mess create. It's nice that the code actually does not a completion works because I had my doubts there. So one thing I want to see is. Mesh create. Oh wait, this is. I think this is a mistake. Yeah, it's mesh create with capitals. Uh, that is actually wrong. Okay, and that's wrong as well. Okay, uh, and that's wrong as well. Uh, I don't think I need. The naming here, yeah. Using snake types. Using snake typing is a, a Python thing. Um, yeah. I haven't really decided exactly what kind of naming I will be using in terms of style, but I do like it because it keeps a bit of space and makes things a bit more readable. Uh, but because it's a class, I will I will still use a camel case as well to make sure that uh, it becomes clear that it is a class. And for uh, methods, I will probably use lowercase. So I think it's uh, it's fine. Okay. Next step. Next step is we need a scub file. Scub file, I say. Okay. So let's do the scub file then. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. So, make a new file here. That's called scub. Let's see. Scub. I think it's called scub, right? Uh, no, it's actually sc, sc scones sub. So, sc sub. So, rename that. It's actually sc sub. And here we're going to copy paste again. So, yeah. Yes. And I don't think this is going to change. This must be the same thing. So, we finish with that. And then we go. No, that's. I don't care about those. Uh, if you want to add the customer. No, I don't want to add the customer products. And then we come with the config PI. So. That doesn't change much. 
Uh, and I think we finished. We still ready to rock. So new file is called config pi. And here we're going to add. So basically, I'm doing the same thing I did with the previous stream. Uh, it's just I'm now creating a special module for that. So now uh, we have to remember how to build. To build. Uh, actually, no, it actually builds with the engine because it's statically linked, which is fine for me. It's not a big problem. You know, maintaining my own fork of Godot is not really a big deal. Uh, so that I actually have to build it. Okay. So now it should work. I don't think I need to undo anything else. I think we're fine. So let's give it a try. Uh, let's go here and let's uh, build it. So this is actually how it builds. Sconch J20 means 20 threads and I'm targeting release build. This is debug because basically it doesn't really have a release. Just re There is a release, but the release uh, build of Godot doesn't contain the editor. And I really want the editor to be also available because I probably will be do some hacking with the editor as well. So yeah, let's do it and hope for the best that I didn't really screw things up. And when I'm happy with the code, I'm going to commit it. Hmm. Wait, am I then seeing a correct folder? Yeah, I'm Cyclops. Why didn't detect... It should have detected uh, header files. That's not good. Uh... Wait, we didn't use anything in the answer command. So I'm in, inside Cyclops. And I am in this folder. Let's see. No, I'm in Cyclops. Why it didn't really detect it? Hmm. Hmm. I'm doing the same thing. Okay. Debug time. Blah, 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 blah. No, I don't want externally. I don't want to write documentation. Okay. So. So I added the submit, the, the header file, the civil file. Uh, do you think that extension really creates a problem? Really? Mm, that's not going to be nice. So maybe I should change. I will actually change it back to be consistent with uh, with Godot. It's okay. So let's change the HTTP back to uh, just a header file, and do the same with registry types. Hit it here. Maybe it doesn't like that. Just to be certain. And then I will go to here and test back and go to here and only have to change the comment here just not to be confusing. Uh, and um, here is register edge. Let's change that to HPP to H. And here let's take to. So I have changed that. Maybe Godot doesn't like that. Okay, let's try again. Yep. Yeah. He actually expects to find the dot h extension. He doesn't really it doesn't really really that support. Oh, there's an error. It doesn't really support uh summator. Wait, where uh I must screw something up. Where is summator? Uh, mesh create, mesh create. I have added the summator somewhere. Summator, not just summator. It's a mesh create. So I probably tell him here to add class information for registration or summator, which basically the class is not called summator, it's called mesh create. So I really screw things up there. And it, some, it seems that it doesn't support HPP files, it supports only .h files. So it actually supports only C header files, which is fine. 
you know, I think it doesn't really make a difference in terms of the compiler in what extension you're using. So let's see now. Now it should compile without any problem. Yeah. Is it an, this is an error? It's an error of some. Why there's a meter still? Mess create eight. What I'm doing? What? Oh. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's check it again. There's no summator anywhere. Yep, that's another summator here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, mess create. Mess create. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. So it's mess create, mess create. Uh, mess create, mess create. Uh, and now it should work without any problems. Yes. Okay. So let's see now. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Error. Uh, expected. Where, where, where? Uh, modules, mess create. Um, 16, 16, let's create x6, 14. So, where I forgot somewhere to add a semicolon hmm? 6, 14, 14. What? Wait, what? Wait. No. Not the header file. 14 is here. Ah, yeah. Forget to add it here. Okay. So returns. Returns, okay. So. Let's try again. Okay, so now I see I don't go. Oh, I don't see errors. I don't see errors, which is nice. Mm. I don't see errors so far in the building process. Uh, you may build things now because uh, I basically Change the branch. So every time you change the branch, usually it's uh, it complains and it tends to rebuild things from scratch. So, but it actually finishes pretty fast. Okay. It finishes pretty fast. The big question I want to ask here is there is because basically I build it inside. Is there is a, 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 a ignore? There must be an ignore here. Uh, file. Let's put it, it must be down there. Zit ignore. So there is a zit ignore here. Uh, okay, so it ignores dog build. Does it ignore build directory? It should ignore the build directory. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it ignores the build directory. Okay, that's actually nice. Because, of course, I don't want to commit it in my repository. Okay, so everything was fine. Okay, there's some warnings here, but nothing, there's no error. Okay, so let's say, let's open it and see if now it works. Um, just one open to the tutorials. And uh, let's open, uh, do we have? Yeah, what I was actually, I think I've, here it was the summator. So there's no summator here, so all that is going to fail because it's not including my build. But I do have a mess create 
yeah. You see, you auto completes, which is very good. And I will have here uh, a creator thing. And I have to print that. The one thing I don't understand is why it doesn't auto complete the. Ah, okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, it was create. Create. Why doesn't auto complete the create? Anyway, let's try that. Um, let's start that. Yeah, it doesn't find the create function. So we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. It doesn't find the the the, the, the method. Um, why? It should find the method. So there is a create method here, and we have a mess create here with the create method. Why doesn't register it? And we have also the definition of the method here. Oh wait, that's that's a constructor, it's not a method. The method is defined here. So why I cannot find it? Hmm. So normally here, he actually should find the method and uh, autocomplete it. Uh, it has to be already registered. So what I'm going to do is just try again. So mess create. Um, and then see what kind of methods it has. It has a new. And that's basically, there is no registration of the create method. I have uh, created in C++. And that method is basically empty right now. It has to it just returns a number and nothing more than that. So the question is why? It doesn't see it. Why it doesn't see it? Hmm. Because it, it does see the class. So we know that this is actually the correct build. Because if it was the incorrect build of Godot, it wouldn't even see the class. So it actually see the class, but for some reason, it doesn't see only the method. What I did wrong? Hmm. I have here the definition of the method. I have a return of the type, right? So far, nothing bad happens here. I know that the the uh, uh, sorry the this is actually how to define it. So if I go to C here again, static void void bind methods. Let's make sure that the header file is correct. Here it is. Uh, so. Um, so the header file is uh, some, it's the name of the class and the reference, which I already did again, public reference, so I didn't really do anything different here. Mess create should correct reference. Uh, then it has um, a protected, which is a my methods, which is correct. And then I have a create and a mess create. So it create, oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, that's correct. So let's let's make him separate, not to be confused. And is this inside the public? Yeah, this is inside the public. So we have here uh, the return and in value, which is mess create in create, which is correct. It's the method I'm actually defining here. Um, so so far this is correct. I don't see anything wrong here. Let's go with the C file. So in the C we have the add, we have the reset, we have the total and the returns. Nothing special. Let's make sure that it includes the correct header file. And then he has the bind methods, which is dbind add. It's actually this definition. Reset, because I don't really actually know uh, which one is the one that returns. The get total this is this definition. Okay. They're not different anyway, so create, mess create, create. 
Maybe he doesn't like the fact that he's uh, create. There's maybe it's a registered name and conflicts with the internals of Godot. It could be one reason why he doesn't like it. Okay, I will change the naming and call it uh, return integer just for the test. Uh, so instead of uh, in create, I will call return integer. Um, return n integer to make the name pretty unique, just in case there's a problem there. So return an integer, and then I'm gonna here call call this uh, a return an integer, and there we're gonna change that to return an integer because the name may conflict with some because create basically is pretty common name, so maybe he actually. Uh, maybe it, uh, it conflicts with the reference method of uh, some kind. Maybe and doesn't like that. Who knows? It is a, it is right now a hypothesis. Uh, return an integer. Uh, I don't think I need to change anything else here. The rest should be remain the same. So I change it from return an integer to return an integer and. Return an indicator here. So now it shouldn't be a problem. So if I go to um, to my terminal, first of all, let's close the build. Uh, let's save that. Let's keep it as it is and close the build. Yeah, quit. And go here and just rebuild that. It shouldn't take no long now. It's just a small change. Okay. Oh. Okay. Let's open it again. Let's go to this one. Let's change it back to two. Let's open the file again. Now, let's let's remove that and make sure that okay. So we have mess. Whoa. Create here it is. Okay. Nope. It doesn't see the. It doesn't see the the method still. So it's not the name. There's something else missing. What did I miss? What did I miss? Because the last time we actually used it, the methods were used just fine. We didn't have any problem. I don't understand. It shouldn't bind here. Oops. It should bind here. I don't get any error. Wait, wait, wait a second. Do I get any errors? No. No error whatsoever. And I have the correct class here register. Mess create. Let's create types. Here we have the correct files, Moldu C++. Here we have the config files. It's fine too. So why on earth it doesn't work? There is nothing more than that. Maybe it doesn't like snake case? Maybe it doesn't like snake case. Although I don't understand why. So anyway, let's let's make it shorter. So let's make it some integer. I don't see why I wouldn't like this thing, but some integer. Um, change that to some integer. 
and send that to some in the gear. So I have to change that as well. Some in the gear. I don't know. I think pretty much it's pointless. Right? That shouldn't really have a problem, but whatever. It shouldn't have a problem. Uh, some in the gear. Some in the gear. Some in the gear. What I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. Mm -hmm. And go back to this. And let's see that it auto completes again. Mess. No. Mess. Creates. Correct. Nope. Some indicator can only can only be called wait 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 non-static function indicator can only be called from an instance. Oh, so it actually needs to be create an instance. Why? The last time we did that, we didn't did it have an instance? Um, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Well, this is why folks should be re reading the errors. Yep, it needs an instance. Of course, it needs an instance. So let's say m. Equals to mess create. Oh, hello, mess create. Yeah, of course, you need an instance. Uh, yeah, and there we're gonna do because it's an instance method, obviously. Yeah, it's not a class method. Uh, some no, it still doesn't find it in the gear. No. La 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 la. Mescrit isn't declared in the current class. In the current class. Okay, let's go back to let's 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 let because I'm doing stupid things here, and let's take a look at the, how you actually use from the script. So you go to blah 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 blah, and then you go to the script. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't make the instance, so I made it this time, and then I can directly call it. Ah, it's new, sorry, my bad. Okay. You see, I'm used to Python. I think Python, yeah, in Python you don't have new, you have just the call of the function. So it was wrong for me to assume that this is the way the script is doing this. And the script does that and that. And let's print that. So now it should work. So it wasn't the name, it wasn't some kind of weird magic I was doing wrong, of course. Yeah, that was also my idea. So yeah, 43. So here we see uh, it prints 43, which basically seems that it works. Uh, we have at least the basis. So now the difficult part, that was the easy part. The difficult part now is how we access internal functions of Godot. Now, the first thing I wanted to do is make a method that's called, um, I will call it generate mess. So I'm going to add a method here that's called uh, generate mess. Uh, and what is, I will actually call it, no, I will call it gen, manner, man, uh, yeah, generate mess array. Okay. And I will have to find what kind of type mess arrays are because I will like my my module to create a mess array and populate it uh, with vertices, indices, and all this kind of stuff, but do it in C++. I don't want to do it in, uh, in C Descript because it's going to be a lot slower. So the big question is how you do that in Godot. 
Now, I could do it, of course, with using GD native, but if I use GD native, I will not have access to the internals of Godot so easily. Uh, the reason why I don't use GD native is because I wanted to have complete control of Godot, have complete access to the internals of Godot. So if I want to do something weird, I'm not limited in any form or way. And if it's a bit, it, if it's more difficult, it's more difficult. It's not really a big problem for me right now. Uh, so the big question is how, what, what kind of types uh, we have here. So if the first thing we have to take a look is reference aids. So I want to take a look at this. So the aids, the reference aids. So the reference aids should be inside modules should be somewhere in the core. So let's go to the core. This is the module. So it's before the modules. It's here. And it's here, you're going to find, find the types. So here we have color eights, which is the color, strat color. So I, I assume those are the internal types of Godot. Um, let's see if there is an array, a mesh array, or a mesh array. Mesh array. Method. Nah. Okay, let's take a look at object. Mm -hmm. Property uses files, blah blah. So the, let's see. Let's look at the documentation. Blah. blah. Let's only copyright. Hmm. See, that's the problem I have with usually reading source code. Uh, is that it rarely contains any form of documentation inside. At least a comment or something that explains what this header file is all about. It's not really that difficult. But in any case, let's go and continue. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Convert property list. Struct methods info. Get class. Get class. So this is basically the object. That must be the GDescript object, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Add user single. Yeah, it actually has the single here, logic. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to care, I don't care about the. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have print string. This is the reference aids. Let's see the reference aids. Let's take a look at reference. What reference do exactly? So this is a reference. What access we have in, ter in terms of methods? Because we inherit from reference for our class. Let's see if we can access any kind of eternal method. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm reading here. So, it's a public object, it uses the same uh, debugging for uh, with the, the class registration generation um, that we use for a module. Uh, it has a ref count, so the reference only has a ref count, so it actually does basically memory management, I presume, here, with reference counting. Basically, reference counting, for those who don't really know, is a way to um, 
keep track of your assignments in terms of memory. And if you have, uh, if, if an object is used by multiple other objects, uh, the, uh, if there's a new object, basically makes an instance of this object, makes or uses the variable for now, so whatever it does, it actually makes use of this object, uh, it will increase the counter by one. So when you actively, the object that makes a reference deletes the reference, so what it does, it, re it reduces the counter from 1 to 0. If it reaches 0, it releases the memory that is object occupies on memory. Because basically what happens here is that we use, uh, we use pointers. And pointers point us to the place in memory. And in their place in memory, we have stored some data. But that data is used by many other classes and many other objects. Uh, you cannot release the data when it's already used by those objects, because if you do that, they will try to access the memory, and you're going to have a beautiful crash. So in order to avoid that, and in order to have all sorts of memory corruption, where you get weird data and you don't know what the hell is going on, uh, you have to make keep, keep track of who actually uses the data. So only when no one is using the data, nobody really cares about the data anymore, is when you say, OK, now it's OK to uh, uh, release the memory and delete the data and nobody will try to access it because everybody thinks that the data is, doesn't exist or it's gone. So reference count is used for that. It's very important because it's actually used from Python as well. And uh, in Python, you, you have the Python C API, which allows you to control how you increase the reference counter and decrease the reference counter. And in many cases, you can use an internal functionality of Python where it does that for you. Uh, but uh, you can also do a low-level access where you can actually manually increase the counter and decrease it. If you use some internal functionalities of Blender, they tend to do that uh, automatically for you, so you, you, you use the standard variable assignment and those kind of stuff, which increase the reference count by one, because they create a reference and they know that the other object will actually refer to your object, and they know that you have to increase the counter to make sure that the, the memory that is not, the object is not deleted from memory, it's not garbage collected in essence, because that's basically uh, what garbage collector is using to keep uh, track of memory and know when to release memory and when not to. So I assume that uh, GDescript is doing something similar. Most likely GDescript, from what I've seen, is module not only to appear as Python, but I think it's also the internals of GDescript appear to me, from what I've seen from the API, I haven't really seen the source code yet, they appear to me that they're very similar. So that is basically a reference object, which most likely it deals mostly with the idea of garbage collection and reference counting, which uh, releases memory automatically for you. Otherwise, you have to mess with um, uh, a lock and free or new and delete in case of C++, uh, which they can create all sorts of crashes because of memory leaks. So reference counting is there just to avoid you having memory leaks and have on you all the crashes and difficult debug problems. Um, and I think this is something similar used here. The question is, is reference counting the only thing it does? Because from the looks of it, that is all it does. I see some Boolean operators here. So basically, probably the Boolean operators are used to compare the identity of the two objects to make sure whether they're identical or different. I assume here it happens. Oh, okay. So we have operators. We have definition of pointers, so you can refer to the pointer of the reference. We have access in the reference. I think this is an accessor. Uh, I think I, th I think this is actually used in C for structs, pointers to structs usually. Uh, probably it's the same thing here. Actually, I have to reference my non knowledge of C plus plus because it's. I haven't coded in C++ for like 20 years. So yeah, I definitely need to be, I have coded in C very recently, but I definitely need to refresh my things because I have no idea how templates and all this kind of stuff work. Uh, I do know how C++ works, but I haven't really, back then 20 years ago, I think I don't think templates work back then. Except, no, I don't think so. So here we have, yeah, get a reference pointer, as I said early on. So here we get a reference pointer, which basically is going to point us to the memory of the reference, so the memory space of the reference, where exactly is located in the memory. We have the assign operator here, I assume. 
where clear previously we had the boolean operators here, which is equal, not equal, less. Wait, there were these two equals here. Ah, because this one it's this one refers to a pointer, and this one is, refers to something else. So that's basically something else. Okay, which I no idea what this. Okay. Uh, we've been going to take a look at this uh, the Godot source code in many cases because I really want to learn how Godot really works internally because we will be doing things that are kind of low level. So you're doing a lot of procedural generation graphics. So expect that I will be doing a lot of um, yeah, a lot of research uh, about the, how the source code works because it's uh, yeah. Okay, we have here the register core types. Oh, okay, we have a register. Ah, we have here register core types. That's actually very useful. So this is the core types we have inside the engine, which is weird. We have the engine. Where's the reference? Mm. Multiplayer API. Resource importer. So those header files are basically pretty high level because I don't see any reference here actually being part of that. That must be the high level header files. Okay. Yeah, it's the input for here. So he registers basically all the, the basic files. So it actually uses a very similar to module system for registration of its own classes. It's quite cool. It's quite cool. So it's not really used only for modules. It's used also for um, in the internals of JavaScript, because I assume here uh, the whole point of class DDB is for JavaScript and of course for uh, GT native. Uh, it actually registers here the class, and here we we don't have any other registration. Here actually deletes the memory for things that occupy the memory. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So let's take a look at C plus plus. So this is the resource CPP. Here it should make a bit more sense. Get path, get some index, reload from file. So it has it now. Load, reload, file reloader, go. And okay. Duplicate. Pretty self explanatory. Uh, get R ID. This is also important. This is actually the IDs that I use from any kind of uh, uh, object inside Godot, they are called resource, identif uh, resource identification numbers. Um, and they are basically a number that gives an ID to the resource you are loading, so you can identify it. And in some cases, it can give you also uh, give you a reference. Because if you don't really know the name of the object, uh, what exactly was named, or where you're located, or where you put it, if you have the number, you basically can locate the object, which is very important, right? So if you having the, keeping track of the number is very important because if you change the name, if you change the reference, uh, it will still refer back to the original object. So the RIDs can be very important in many cases where you have like hundreds of thousands of objects and you keep you want to keep track of them and you don't want to have long complicated names. You just want to keep databases and having IDs really makes things a lot easier there. Uh... Okay, so basically the, the whole thing with, uh, we don't even have to read the source code here because if we go to, um, to here and we go uh, go to the reference, actually the class is accessible from this script. Um, if you go to reference, go to here, you're going to see that the class is described here, which is init reference, reference and reference. Uh, Although we have here a lot less methods because this is the JDScript version um, and we, we we are looking at. So as you can see, the JDScript version is actually very minimal. It doesn't have any booleans and all the, any kind of the stuff that we have seen. But um, it still can tell you that's a base class for any object that keeps a reference count, which we said earlier on. Resource and many other helper objects inherit this class. Uh, which is why it's important. Basically, everything, as far as you know, pretty much everything uh, inherits object, inherits from object, right? Right? Yeah. 
So the only th I heard is from the object, which we saw early on as object C++ and object H. And this is basically what it does is deals with memory, mostly. Uh, so it says resource and many other inherits from its class. Unlike other object types, references keep an internal reference counter, which we saw earlier on. We increase in and decrease in it. So they, they are automatically released when longer in use, which is actually what I said earlier on. References, therefore, do not need to be freed manually with object free. That is the big deal there. A reference count is used by a garbage collection. Essentially, that is basically the most basic. Basically, is the most basic. Uh, it is the most uh, one of the most basic ways to do garbage collection. Uh, you keep a track of things. You have a reference counter. That you count how many things reference or point to this uh, thing in memory. And when you no one is appointed in this memory, the reference count goes back to zero. Or otherwise, if it's five objects that reference to the memory, they're going to be five. If it's four objects, it's going to be four. Blah blah. blah. And then it's going to decrease gradually because those objects will no longer need this piece of memory. And when the, no one needs this memory, the reference count is going back to zero, and the memory is going to be released. So, so it says to you that this is not a class you definitely need to access directly. But basically, everybody, almost everybody, everything really reference, uh, inherits from that, which is why uh, in our module we use reference as well, because we want to have automatic memory management to an extent. So when we finish with something, uh, we don't have to manually delete it. Um, the methods provided in this class are only for advanced users. Can use can use uh, and and can cause issues if misused, which is ca the case because if you try to affect the reference count, where there are actually uh, objects there that they're using. So if you say uh, reference count is going to go back to zero, even though there are three objects in memory or one object in memory that uses this object, that's a bad idea because you're going to lead to the crash because you will try to access the memory. And even in the memory will not be accessible anymore because it's free, or the memory is still used. In many cases, in, in Godot, it's actually even worse. The memory still is used because they use something called the pool memory, which is basically a piece of memory that uh, uh, they put all the data there. And the reason why uh, you, uh, the reason why you do that is because if you have a dedicated place in memory where you actually do stuff, and you don't have individual assignments for any object on everything you create and you just have one place where you put all your things, it means that you don't have to do, uh, 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 release and you don't have to release your memory and delete it and create it every single time, which uh, is better for performance. Uh, but it has other problems, which is basically you have to know exactly where in your memory is your data release. You have to use your own kind of memory address in instance, and you have to be careful how you manage the memory because if you delete things, because they live... Uh, um, they leave empty spaces in, inside your memory, in a sense, you create a problem for fragmentation. If you are an old Windows, Windows user nowadays, people uh, don't even know about what the fragmentation is. For us, that we used to be a bit older in using uh, a computer, uh, it means that your, uh, you, you start seeing your hard drive becomes, uh, you know, wasting more and more space and not realizing why it's wasting it. Usually it's because it's empty spaces that are randomly in random places and they're, they're accumulated because when you delete something, you cannot put in its place something of the exact same size. It's not possible. Uh, it's going to be most likely uh, smaller. It cannot be bigger because if it's bigger, you, you will have to override uh, the other data there. So that means you have to go with something smaller or equal. Now, being equal is very rare. So it has to be smaller. If it's smaller, it will leave an empty space. And those space accumulate. And you have the problem of fragmentation. So there's a good reason to use multiple assignments of managing memory, uh, of accessing and releasing it. But also there is a good reason to uh, use a memory pools uh, because they, they have a problem of fragmentation, but also they're much faster to work with. And usually games go with that and game engines go with memory pools, uh, which I think Godot does as well in this case scenario. So here we have basically a class that is not meant to be used. It doesn't really have anything super important. So we will not find here a reference to a mess. So the big question here is what object is the MS object? MS array. MS array returns a mess. So what I'm going to do here is going to go here and do a search and say, find me all things that are mess. Uh, um, yeah. So 
Ness API, Rack Ness. Okay, that's a Ness Rack Ness. What else do we have here? Okay, let's put it in capitals. Because capitalization usually matters here. And let's go with that. So let's see if I can find. Okay, there's a geometry CPP file here. And there's the mesh data here. So we have a spring, we have a clear triangulator, and a geometry CPP. This geometry CPP is, of course, in core math, which I don't think I need. I need something, I don't need the mathematics behind it. I need, okay, there's a triangle mesh here. Uh, what is that? This one is in math as well. Everything is in math. Uh, what is that? XMLs, no, I don't want XMLs. Uh, don't want XMLs. What is scroll bar? I hear, oh my god, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. So, multi mess instance. No, I want something that is a mess. Mess data. No, I don't want mess data. I want. So I'm gonna go with this script and see uh, if I remember correctly. We 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 wanted to use uh, mess. Let's go with mess here. Let's first of all let's find it from this script. So this is mess. So this is a mess class. This is actually what I want to find. What? No. That's not what I want to find. Okay, let's try it again. Mess. Yep. Let's see what we have here. So with mess we had an array. Okay. No, that's that's not what I want. Uh Particles. Okay, so do I know? I don't want a mess instance. I only want a mess array. Let's say mess array. Is it a mess array? No. Maybe an array mess. Yeah, array mess. So probably I have to go with array mess. So, okay, so what we're going to do here is go here and do an array mess. Okay, so let's go up there. Yeah, that's that's XML, so I don't care about those. So it doesn't have, you know. Resource importer. Okay, let's say an resource importer. There is an array mesh here because it uses a reference type. So there's definitely a class called array mess. Uh, let's see if we can find it. No. Wait, 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 wait. This used to have, okay, files to include. I want only simply files. Okay. So, Mess instant editor plug no. I'm gonna find you. Mess inst mess instant CPP. Here it is. Okay. So we have it here, reference array mess as usually. Now let's see if there is included how many lines is this thing? Oh, one thousand, so it's not a big thing. Ah uh, okay, there's a mess instant age. Okay, so let's take a look at the mess instance age. Where is it located? In core, no, in scene, 3D. Scene 3D, why it's in a scene? Collision, core, project settings, core string uh, names, scene, scene, and skeleton. So it's actually in the scene folders that it has find that. So let's go to the scene. Okay, let's go scene. Uh, what is scene? This is core. Ah, this is the math we are find in the early on where it defines the geometry. So let's go to the scene part. 
Uh, is this here? I don't see it. I think those one are the modules. So scene. Oh, okay, I found it. Okay, 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 okay. So it's here. Okay, I just found it. It's located here. Okay, I'm blind. I don't see it. So let's dig the header file. So the mess instance is using which feeder file? Visual. Ah, if, okay. Not this is what it is. Mess H. Resource mess H. So we have a resource here. Let's see if we find the resource. So we have the scene resources resources message mesh library multi mesh yeah so message is here so this one is the message okay um class mess this is where it is public resource so this is where we access the mess so let's see if we can return a mess type. How we do that is a good question. So here we have the definition of mess. Well, it's basically inside the scene, inside the resources subfolder mess.h. Okay. So we have a triangle mess, right? But what I want is go to okay let's go back to the tutorial and let's go to the tutorials and let's take a look at the surface tool and create voxels from surfaces and take a look at not the player the voxel instance and here is where actually i do the, my magic create from image uh i will render so what I did here, I said set set commit. So what was that the one thing I did to assign it to the mess? Blah 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 blah. Mess. Okay, so it's dot mess. So this one is a mens voxel. This is a mens instance, and it has a mess variable. So let's find, first of all, a mens instance and see if we can access the mesh variable. So I keep this open because I like it. And I go here and say I find a mess instance because basically that's what we do here. Mess instance. And find all the mess instance. Let's see if we find a mess instance CPP file. Mens instance editor. Yep, here it is. This is mess instance to dp to d. I don't want to d. I don't want the multi mess. Mess instance cpp. Here it is. Okay. So here I want to go and find the header file. Uh, what is located? The same thing. Cyclops since three d. So we go back to uh, mess instance. I want the header file. So here we have, here we go. That's a mess. This is exactly what I want. So it actually references uh, a mess here. Right. So that is what I want to be able to create that. So, yeah, so far, um, that's what, how far I've gone. I found where the variable is and I have located it. And what I'm going to do next time, also I'm going to take a look at templates to make sure that I understand how templates work because this is a template. This is why it's surrounded by less than uh, greater than equal signs, uh, less than uh, greater than signs, uh, comparison signs. Um, so I have to make sure I understand that. But before we go, let's take a look at what we have here, merge into mesh data, uh, check for validness. So as you can see here, when something is underscore, it means that it's an internal function, an internal method in this case. And this is why it's private also. Which I also have to take a look at uh, C++ later on to see, I understand how C++ objects work in terms of what is private, uh, protected, and public. 
um, and understand some basic things about object orientation in C++. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much aware of how object orientation works. I have also worked with object orientation in C++ uh, you know, back on the case, but I'm not really that versed with the semantics of C++. Uh, and of course, I'm, you know, I'm very noob when it comes to C++ generally. But, you know, we are here to learn. So we have here the cross structure, we have the destructor, um, we have the grinder. Now, here is the, well, it actually returns a node. You see, you can return a node here. Create a triangle collision where, uh, I want also to see, it has to have one that's called, this is the methods. Uh, is it here also the variable? No, I think all of that from what I've seen here are methods. So no. So the variables will be. So how do I access those things? Do we use any like property kind of thing? I assume that may be the case. So you can see here I use a reference mess. So you have to find a way to include that if I want to use it. I'm not sure that I will be able to use it otherwise. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, if you think about it, I probably will have also to find how the surface tool works on C++ as well. Because I will definitely I'm not going to be messing directly with the mess here. I'm going to probably be using the internal functionality of surface tool. And uh, yeah, let's do one last thing before I leave. Let's search for Surface Tool. Surface Tool. So Surface Tool is... Here it is. What? No, I'll close it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, where is it? What did I do? Is there something stupid? No, here it is. Okay. So let's go to the surface tool. So this is the surface tool. Where is that? Same. Okay, so they're all on in the scenes resources. Okay, that's nice. So this is the folder we'll be working on. It's going to be in the scene and the resource subfolder. It has the mens instance, it has the mess, and it has uh, also the surface tool that I will be using from C++. So basically what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be using from C++ the reference tool. This is an equal cooperation, virtual sensor. Okay, so I will taking a look at the source code here just to get a general idea. I'm not even care about the source code so much. I care about the header file, which is going to give me general information on how to use this. Uh, so you can see here it actually references messages. So what we have to do is use the surface tool. Yeah, I mean, why not use why not use why not use Surface Tool? Yeah, if you think about it, it's, it's pretty fine. Uh, the big question is that I want to create a mess. So creating a mess is here. Create from, and it takes an existing mess. Wait, wait. How we actually do that here? We generate. Also, we had. No, we didn't have a create mess. We had. A begin surface tool new a begin and then we have uh, no just a commit so is there's a commit here uh, commit commit what is that that is Commit. This is a create from another mess, obviously. Creates a mess from another mess. An array. Ah, no, here it is. A commit. Yeah, here it is. So it takes an array mess. Reference an array mess. So there is an array mess. So where is the header file for array? Is it part of the mess? In yeah, it has to be part of the header file of the mess. So there is an array mess that it uses here. Um, and yeah. Right, but it takes uh, it, it takes an argument here, which is not the case with the GD script. 
That is an argument. Actually, this is two arguments. There's one that is an array mess, which is basically use the, the array mess constructor, maybe. And the second one is the flags. So I assume those are default arguments, if I'm not mistaken. So it uses the default compression for the array. So it uses the compression to compress the data and make sure that it actually is decreased in size for optimization purposes. Okay. Right. So what we learned now, now is that we get the basics of how to match a module. And we find also where to locate, uh, what is a reference, first of all, which is basically a bit more sophisticated than the ones we see in GDescript, uh, but it's still the same idea. It's basically about reference accounting. And we find out also where to locate uh, the short files, if possible, for creating using the Surface tool from C++. Because one of the things we need to do here is use, uh, yeah, use, uh, use from C++ uh, the surface tool. That's the whole thing I want to try to do here. So, and I want to do it from C++ because obviously it's going to be a lot faster um, in terms of generating the array. I don't think that the surface tool itself will be faster from C++. Maybe it is. I don't know. But generally, yeah, creating the tool array itself. Um, I mean, for a small array, it's not going to make a big difference. But if it's a big array, uh, like, you know, hundreds of thousands of polygons, it's going to make a difference. Um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, see you on the next part. I will be streaming again in a couple of hours, um, for another two hours, um, maybe a bit less than that. And we will be seeing there, uh, how exactly we can use a surface tool from, uh, a C++ module. So thank you all for watching. Uh, and see you a bit later. Bye-bye.